an eighth of the year has gone by, so it's now time to really start looking at chemistry. And chemistry is obviously the best subject in the world, but I am forced to also say that's in my not so humble opinion. So given that, let's start by defining what chemistry is. And chemistry is the study of matter and how matter changes. Basically, it's the study of everything. Matter, as far as we're concerned, is anything that takes up space and has mass. And all matter has two types of properties. They have physical properties and chemical properties. Once again, physical properties and chemical properties. And physical properties and chemical properties are different. So let's begin with physical properties. A physical property is what you can measure or observe as a way to describe a piece of matter. It's how you describe how something looks, feels, tastes, etc. So for example, take some water. Below zero degrees Celsius, you all know that water is a solid. A physical property of water is that it freezes at zero degrees Celsius. You could also say it melts at zero degrees Celsius. Another property of water is that above zero degrees Celsius, but below 100 degrees Celsius, water is liquid. So a physical property of water is that it is liquid between zero degrees Celsius and 100 degrees Celsius. Now it turns out that physical properties, there are two types. There are extensive physical properties and intensive physical properties. Extensive physical properties depends upon how much material you have, whereas intensive don't change no matter how much you have. So for example, let's take three beakers and fill them with a liquid and we're going to call the liquid water. The more water I have, the larger the volume I have. I've got 100 milliliters, 500 milliliters, one liter. The more water atoms, the more volume. So the volume depends upon how much material I have. That is an extensive property. An intensive property would be, say, the boiling point. If I put these all on hot plates and allow them to reach the boiling point, the 100 milliliter beaker, the water would boil at 100 degrees Celsius. In the 500 milliliter beaker, the water would boil at 100 degrees Celsius. And in the 1 liter beaker, the water would boil at 100 degrees Celsius. No matter how much water I have, it boils at 100 degrees Celsius. So intensive properties don't depend upon how much you have. Now, you cannot use the extensive properties to identify materials. If I hand you a 2 liter bottle of a clear liquid, did I hand you water, Sprite, Sierra Mist, anything like that? All it tells you is how much you have. However, intensive properties are what we do use to identify materials. For example, water is a clear colorless liquid. That's an intensive property. But there are lots of liquids that are clear and colorless. However, when you then put it freezes at zero, boils at 100, has a density of one gram per milliliter, now we can say, aha, this is water. All samples for any compound are going to have identical intensive properties simply because they're the same material. And here's just a partial list of some intensive properties. Boiling point, melting point, color, odor, taste, density, the ability to conduct electricity, how hard the material is. All these can be used to help identify materials. Extensive properties, there are really three. Two you know without problem, mass and volume. And the third you also know, but probably haven't thought about, which is how much heat something produces. Think about it. The bigger the bonfire, the more the heat. So chemical properties. This is the ability of a substance to undergo a specific chemical reaction, or actually even the inability, or the ability to have atoms rearrange. And this is the ability. It's not the doing it. For example, propane, it has the chemical property of being flammable. It catching on fire is not a property, but we'll get to that in the next lecture. So a chemical property is the ability for something to undergo a reaction. So to review things, chemistry is the study of matter. Matter is anything that is mass and volume. 
Physical properties are what you can measure or observe as a way to describe the matter. There are two types of physical properties, extensive, which do depend upon how much you have, and intensive, which are independent of what you have. And a chemical property is the ability for a substance to undergo a specific reaction. So that's your introduction to chemistry. And in actuality, the entire rest of the year is basically going to be spent talking about, in more detail, chemical and physical properties. In the next video, we're going to deal with how do things change.